Sheriff Richard Mack is on the line with us, the founder of the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace, Key, Peace Officers Association, Board of Directors of the Movement, former Arizona Sheriff in Graham County. Uh, CSPOA.org is the website uh, for the Constitutional Sheriffs and Peace Officers Association. Sheriff Mack, welcome back. Well, thanks, Tom. Uh, and thanks so much uh, for the, uh, well, let's say the support you've given me and my family recently. Oh, you're welcome. I, you know, I think you're a decent guy, and and I, I've, it's the, the, the rough times that you've you've been going through are, are unfortunate. I think. Um, well, um, you know, I, you and I disagree on lots of issues, and uh, <laughs> yeah. probably always will. But uh, uh, I don't fit. Uh, I'm not your normal run of the mill uh, Republican, um, and I don't think you're the normal run of mill Democrat. So no. maybe that's where we meet. Yeah, I think you know. Yeah, and 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 I'm curious. Your the, the this this whole issue of how police are funded in the United States. It uh, from from uh, I really started thinking about this back in the '90s when I took a class at the Georgia Police Academy and got some sense of what you know how state police were trained and what was going on, and and how they were paid, and it has struck me, and, and, and as you know, I lived in Europe for a year, I lived in Germany for a year, and cops there are really well paid. They have, uh, you know, when they retire, uh, in, uh, I believe in their, typically in their 50s or thereabouts, after 20, 25 years of service, um, they have, a, you know, full pension, they have full health insurance their entire lives. Police officers are held to a very high standard, I believe. I know it's certainly the case in, in many of the Northern European countries. You have to have at least a two-year degree in criminal justice in order to even qualify to apply to become a police officer. And cops and doctors and teachers are all paid at the very high end of upper middle class, what would be maybe $100,000 a year in today's you know, U.S. dollars. Um, and, and, and yet here in the United States, we've got police departments that are being funded by Basically, theft by what's it called when you take the uh, car that the crime was committed in? Asset forfeiture. Affis asset for forfeiture. You got that. You've got you know this the scam that was running in Ferguson, Missouri, where they you know they just ticket people for small things on the bet that that ticket that they can't pay that ticket fast enough, and so it'll go to court and it'll double or triple or quadruple, and eventually you've got everybody in town owing you you know I mean they they generate two million dollars out of thirty thousand people uh, right. this way. And, and then now we've got this guy, this 73-year-old guy who, who thought he was pulling out a taser, apparently, at least that's what he said, pulling out a taser, and shoots this guy dead, and it turns out that he wasn't really a police officer. He was a donor to the police officer, sort of like Jamie Diamond at, at Chase, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase giving 4 or $5 million to the New York Police Officers Association just before they went in and trashed the Occupy movement just outside Jamie Diamond's office. It's like... Work. This is crazy. Your thoughts? It is crazy. Now, I, I have fought all against that. I campaigned against asset forfeiture laws, and this is what really bothers me about that and the wholesale distribution of traffic tickets, which I've written books about, by the way. Hmm. Uh, I, I have a the practice of uh, vi of uh, ticket violations and and these this type of uh, fundraising police departments and governments is so immoral and so wrong that uh, I'm trying to convince chiefs and sheriffs in this country to not do what everything uh, the legislature says you can do. Don't Supreme Court has mistakenly said you can do. For instance, Gestapo style roadblocks and, and take out the word Gestapo roadblocks period. I don't care for, for DUI checkpoints or for administrative checkpoints to see if people have their papers, comrade. Right. Uh, we do all that in America. And I can't believe that the chiefs and sheriffs of this country say, well, the Supreme Court said we do, we said we can, so we do it. I am so appalled at that type of leadership. The Supreme Court does not run my sheriff's office. When I was sheriff, the Supreme Court did not run my sheriff's office. I looked at what they said, and I weighed that with what we had to do serve the people and stay within our promise to uphold and defend the Constitution and to protect people's rights. And if we properly trained our officers across this country in all of those issues, real public service, uh, how do we avoid police brutality and how do we get out of these situations and, and stay in the proper mode of protecting 
rights. We are the guards of the American Republic. That is what we promised to do. But yet now we are the punishers and we are the teach this dirt bag. Use the term maggot. That's police talk. Mm -hmm. We're going to teach this maggot a lesson and we're going to show this maggot who the boss is. And that's what we've seen in just recent days yeah. far too much. Now, the one in Tulsa, that's a whole different story. That was supposedly an accident, and it's really a strange accident, I admit. But for somebody to buy their way into a reservist position, is that's, that sheriff is really going to answer for that one. And, and that should never be. But it's back to the money game you and I are talking about. Yeah, it's... And that money game has to do with, uh, in in my opinion, um, basically austerity. And I, I I'm I don't think that there's a political side to this. I, it's I, I realize you know the re Republicans are pushing austerity, um, It'll end and up the Democrats being not. One. But pardon? It'll end up being one. But uh, oh right, yeah, it, I, it should not be one. It, we should be funding police. I mean, it, the our 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 teachers hold our future in their hands, and our police officers hold our present in their hands, and we should be funding our police departments with a reasonable tax base that allows a allows them to do a, a good job and not have to you know scrape by or, or try to basically rob people. I mean, it's 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 crazy. Well, let's go to the the, the asset forfeiture thing. Is absolutely illegal. Yeah. It's unlawful and illegal yeah. because it literally puts the the pressure on the officer to uh, fudge on probable cause. So he was watching. You know, he's just sitting on the freeway and he sees somebody that looks like they're fitting the profile of a drug runner. Mm -hmm. And there are types of cars and there are types of people that are in those vehicles that fit a profile. And so then they have to fudge on probable cause to make a stop. And then they uh, fudge on getting probable cause to search the vehicle. And then they find a big load of drugs and money and guns. And then the, that department keeps all the money or shares the money with other federal or state agencies. And they keep all the money from that situation regardless of whether the person is found guilty. Right. And one, uh, we, we have, uh, I think, the second state in the United States just outlawed F asset forfeiture. Um, Which one? I believe well, it was New Mexico. I, I could be wrong. Well, my hat's off to them, and they yeah. should. And it's it, and for any sheriff and chief to say, oh, yeah, we got to do that because we got budgetary constraints. And, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and for county commissioners and city councils, to support this kind of activity just because it brings in the money, yeah. that kind of political and police prostitution is, I find, totally astonishing. Yeah. And it's shocking that we participate in that type of a, uh, of police action where we use our badge to collect funds for our own budgets. That, that's astonishing. Yeah. It's not just astonishing. It, it is. It, it, I think it runs counter to the principles on which this country was founded. It uh, totally does. I mean, it totally does. And it puts the officer in such a compromising position and conflict of interest for the whole department and from the patrol officer all the way up to the sheriff, it compromises their integrity and compromises their purpose for being there. And I can't believe we do it. And I have assailed this for years, even when I was sheriff yeah. uh, back in the day. And uh, Good uh, on you. I, you I have fought this. It's an amazing thing. Sheriff Richard Mack, uh, you have a website, don't you? This is sheriffmack.com? Yeah, that, that one and the CSPOA.org. Okay, CSPOA.org as well. Sheriff Richard Mack, thanks so much for being with us, sir. All right. It's great, talking again, with you. Um, great talking with you. We'll be back.